If you've been wanting to add parallel guides to your track saw setup, but don't want to spend a fortune doing it, then stick around and check out my low-tech shop-made solution. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of DP Shop Talk. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at some parallel guides that I made for my track saw. Now these are quick, easy, and cheap to make, but they're very accurate. Now parallel guides can really bring a lot of speed and accuracy to your track saw when you're doing a lot of rip cuts, especially if you're doing a lot of cuts of the same width since it bring, brings that repeatability to it. Now I will quickly show you how I made these guides and then I'll show you how they work. Now the jigs are super simple. There's two uh, parallel guide jigs and one setting jig. They're all made the same way uh, with the exception of the setting jig has a shallow dado milled in the face of it and I'll talk more about that in just a minute. So the main bar of, of the jigs is just a piece of half inch Baltic birch, two and a quarter inches wide with a three eighth inch wide uh, groove mill down the center. The stop blocks are also made of half inch Baltic birch. Uh, so there's the main plate of it and then there's two cleats that are attached and what they do is form a channel uh, for the main bar to fit into so that it can slide back and forth. So the uh, uh, the stop block has a quarter inch carriage bolt set into the back of it that goes through the groove and then is locked in place with just a washer and a wing nut so it can be backed off slid to wherever it needs to be and then locked down so it's nice and secure and nice and accurate everything registers square uh, so that uh, that the bar is coming across to the track nice and square as well so the setting jig like i said is made in the same way except it has a shallow dado milled in the face of it uh, so that the bench tape, the adhesive back bench tape, can be applied and, and sit just below the surface so it doesn't interfere with the stop block at all. Now as you can probably see, I reused an off cut of, uh, of bench tape in this case. It was actually from uh, my crosscut jig for the MPT and so I just took a black sharpie, changed out the numbers and it works great. So that's how I made the, uh, the jigs, so now we'll take a look at how they work. So the reason I went with a setting jig rather than just putting the tape on each of the parallel guides is it guarantees that both of the parallel guides are set exactly the same, which is gonna give you the parallel cut. If you don't have a parallel cut, then really you have a set of taper jigs, which is not what we're after. So to use the setting jig, you just unlock the uh, wing nut on the back side and then slide it along to the measurement you want. So in this case, we'll lock it down to 18 inches. And uh, I've put a letter R on this end of the setting jig and a letter T on the ends of the, uh, the parallel guides. So that keeps everything straight. So I know that the R is where I want the stop blocks of the uh, the parallel guides to butt up against and the T is where it's going to butt up to the track so it doesn't get switched end for end accidentally and give you that tapered cut. So you just uh, register the end of the parallel guide to the setting jig, slide the stop block along, lock it down. Do that with each one and then that's the end of the setting jig. So then I just take the parallel guides and clamp them down to the workpiece. And then take my track and butt it up to it and it's good to go. Now clamping them down is an extra step, but it gives you an extra measure of security because now the track can never move this way, giving you a smaller workpiece than what you're looking for. Worst case scenario, if it ever moved or got bumped and went the other way, it's gonna give you a bigger piece than what you're looking for and you can always cut it down afterwards. So since wood stretchers are really hard to come by these days, I find that extra guarantee is a good thing. So that's how my low-tech shop-made parallel guides work. Now there's definitely some slicker options available out there, but these only cost me a couple of bucks to make and they've worked really well for me. They have a lot of accuracy and some good features. 
So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, make sure you leave your ideas, questions, and what's worked for you in the comments below. Let's get some shop talk going. So thanks for watching, and until next time, let's talk shop. Mm -hmm.